that was measured 500 millimetres by 400 millimetres and will be displayed on the existing fence at the rear of the site. It's considered that this proposal will meet the requirements set out in policy HS15 and is not considered to have an adverse impact on the residential character of the area and is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Joe. Any questions? Any opposed? And this happened before we please pack oh, Pat, you've got a question? Yes, sorry. Um, I just wondered if you could indicate um, whereabouts the signs are going to be on And am I right in thinking that um, 400 by 500 is approximately 20 inches by 25 inches for those who are Imperial measurement. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one sign for here and another one on the opposite side. Um, the hangman sign is on this side. Um, the one that, uh, on this side, sorry, the one that fixes the purposes is on this side. And then about that by that. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. They have been amended. Um, this size, they any more questions? Okay, so the recommendation is to approve. Can we have a, a proposal and a second, please? Joe <laughs> and Pat. And all those in favour? Okay, and against? No cats. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. On to item number 12. Can we have a presentation, please, Jo? Thank you, Chair. Through you. This application has been removed from delegation by Councillor Watt on the grounds that the first development will be sited forward an established building line in a prominent corner position close to two existing dwellings and will be overbearing and detract from the character of the Caldy Conservation Area. There have been two letters of objection to this proposal. The application site forms up part of the side garden on 140 Caldy Road which is set within the uh, east measures of the Caldy Conservation Area. Within this part of the um, conservation area, a more diverse and density development will be committed subject to conservation policies. The proposed dwelling is two-storey in height and will be sited forward of the existing house at number um, 140, but set back from the site. This, together with the eastern boundary treatment and absence of any vehicle openings, is felt to minimise the impact of a new dwelling within the street scene. In terms of design, the proposed use is a contemporary approach which takes reference from the conservation area to the use of traditional materials, including a slated lender and a steep pitched roof, to reflect the characteristics of surrounding properties. In terms of separation distance, overlooking between the windows to the rear of both um, the existing and proposed are at an oblique angle and will be set between 18 and 22 metres, which would meet normal requirements. For these reasons are considered that the proposal is acceptable and recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions. Thank you, Joe. Is there any questions? David? Yes, thank you, Chair. Oh, oh sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, well, Walking. That's what you've been busy tonight, so I think you've got to look forward. Sorry. Pardon me, Jeffrey. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Chair and members. Um, Councillor Geoffrey Watt, West Kirby, and um, Ward. Thank you for, of course, putting the footprint plan up on the, on the wall, on the screen. Um, and when you come to the point, you should also see a visualisation of the proposal. Um, the Caldy um, Conservation Area Management Plan refers to Lowe's entity, originally one dwelling per acre, and not being allowed to increase. Um, it also calls for respecting the relationships within uh, the existing neighbouring buildings with each other and the road and site boundaries. Um, there is a strong presumption against new buildings that are unduly prominent. This is a very prominent corner site. To achieve the minimum, minimum separation distances, particularly looking at number one crop drive east, it's been necessary to pull the building forward in the site so you can see it is way in front of the building line of number 140, the property from which it's being separated. And if you had um, a, a plan of the remainder of Courtney Road going along towards the east, you would see that the next three houses are also in line with number 140. The one after 
that is set a bit back but has a garage projected slightly forward. And the next two beyond that are set way back in their plots. So overall, the view you get when you come into the Corley Conservation Area from Corley Roundabout, heading west, is houses set well back from the road. And now you'll be asked to plonk this building, which you will see the visualisation of later, right up to the front fence, right on the corner. Now to me, this absolutely goes against everything in the management plan. And the plain fact is, you can't fit it in. One way or another, you're stuck. And the only way they're, getting, uh, they're covering the uh, privacy issue is by proposing um, planting on the southern elevation up against number one Croft Drive uh, East and the electricity substation. And if you see the accommodation for the proposal, that is the very side of the new house where all the principal habitable rooms are, the lounge, the dining room, the main bedroom, that's the very place where they're going to want sunshine and the outlook. And they're going to have to maintain trees right in front of them, or will they? So it, to me, it's just all wrong. This should not be allowed. It's splitting up what is intended to be a large plot, trying to shoehorn something in. It's right on the corner, and as I said in the earlier presentation, you know, it just can't be hit. Um, the only thing that's hiding it will be the existing planting around, around the boundaries. That should go well, you know, it's completely exposed, it's against all the principles, and I would ask you to refuse it and make sure for some of the reasons I put to, I ask if you take that delegation, which are of course on the, the late list. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Councillor. Any questions? David? Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, well, I think my ward colleague has put it most eloquently and made most of the points that I was going to make, so I'm not going to repeat them. But I would want to uh, endorse all that he said in the sense that uh, I would like to move a refusal on the following grounds. Uh, we, before you do, Dave, yeah. I think, I think so yeah. the yeah. rest yeah. of the committee have a bit of a sit yeah. with well, your refusal. I was going to say once everybody else has uh, yes, comments. Yes. 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 Does anybody have anything else to add?
Um, the, proposal, and the proposal involves the construction of a single story building in compound to house gas pressure reduction equipment. Building measures seven and a half metres by three and a half metres by five metres. The position of the building will require the removal of a small section of hedge on the northern elevation, although additional hedging will be planted around the site besides the structure. The applicant has stated that the structure is required to improve gas pressure control over the existing network, specifically to assist controlling gas supply through the damage length of the pipeline, which is causing leaks. In terms of flood risk, the height of the finished floor level plus the anticipation of infrequent visits assumes the risk is not high to its users, and there are no objections from the environment agency in this regard. It's therefore considered that the proposed building brings significant safety improvements, which, which would constitute very special circumstances needed satisfy both national and local planning policy advice. The site of the design will minimise visual impact of the building on the openness of the green belt, and it's for these reasons the application is recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions. Thank you, Chair. Is there any questions? Any questions? The officer's recommendation is for approval. Uh, David's to propose, and Eddie's to second. Do all those in favour? Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, this application is for the construction of 48 uh, one two bedroom apartments and a new health care facility. Two previous applications, one outline, one detailed application, were granted last year in an identical scheme. The applicant has indicated that conditions attached to the previous scheme did not provide sufficient flexibility between the two elements of development. This includes <coughs> Specific pre-commencement commitment information for both elements of development and for work commences. Phase A will consist of the apartments, car park, and landscaping, plus residential and highway works at Bridge Court and Bridge Road. The second phase will provide healthcare facility and associated car park and pedestrian and highway works at Orisdale Road. The proposal will retain the entrance to the lot and the large portion of existing open space. Functions and landscaping strip that linkages to the rural way maintained. In terms of appearance and immunity issues, the health centre is contemporary field to its design, offering low pitched, powder coated aluminium roofs and fenestration detailing. Following a request for a screening opinion from the applicant on the need for a full environmental impact assessment, it's determined that the proposal of the have any significant environmental effects and the full EIA is not therefore required. In regards to separation distances, adequate distances are achieved for the proposal and therefore meets the council's advice to attach an SPD2. With regards to highway and traffic implications, the council's traffic and transport division have raised no objections to the proposal, subject to conditions related to the upgrade of pedestrian links, both inside and outside the site, and a 106 agreement to, serve a commuter, to secure a commuter zone towards the provision of the same crossing points to the bridge and Honestale Road Junction. The proposal bit mirrors a previously approved scheme in terms of appearance and layout and provide a good quality of affordable housing and a health centre. The proposal therefore complies with both national and local plan policies and is recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions. Thank you, Joe. Any questions?
you need to vote on this. You need to vote on this. So we're voting on the um, officer's recommendation. Members are asked to agree um, with the requirements of the Section 106 agreement meeting in relation to the planning application for APPP 13005 is removed so that the planning uh, approval can be issued and alternative arrangements of funding and various works will be agreed through the development agreement. So are we all we all stand and we're all in favour. Can we please show that we're in favour of that? That's unanimous. Thank you very much.
strategy, whether we think that effective or not, is another issue. Um, you know, they're going to be there in our faces for a generation. And to me, our precious, precious horizon, clear horizon and seascape is being destroyed by this industrialization. Um, thank you, Chair. I think I have long established views that most people are aware of on the efficacy of wind farms in general. I think they're a total waste of space and they're putting our camps, our um, tax bills up and our fuel costs up over the coming years as well as at the moment. So I don't have any brief for them at all. But having said that, if they're going to be built, I have to endorse what um, Councillor Watt has said. I live 100 yards off the foreshore from the North Parade at Mells, and there are two things that concern me. One, they're grossly visually intrusive, that's the first thing. The second thing is, as of today and yesterday, as usual, they weren't even rotating, so they're not generating electricity while they're standing still. And that has been my bone of contention with them all the time, of course. But from a purely visual point of view, I think they're visually intrusive. Um, the other thing that uh, Jeffrey Watt has alluded to was last time this particular bank of um, wind farms was being erected off the coast at Mells, at 2.30 in the morning, we were woken up by the continuing bang, bang, bang pile riding of these things. And in fact, it was your successor, Toby, your predecessor, I should say, uh, Cliff Jones, who kindly phoned up Dong contractors who were working at 2.30 in the morning to tell them to kindly resist, and they did in fact stop within 20 minutes. But what was going on there was totally unacceptable. Now that's not a planning issue, it's just a practical issue. I had a load of complaints from a load of local residents who said this is totally unacceptable. Uh, and I think the final point I would want to make is that if we're going to be stuck with these things, it appears that we are. There already has been a lot of work provided for um, uh, the old um, Camel Earth buildings by the work associated with the foundations. And I have been asked by a number of people to ask four questions, which I'd like incorporating in some way into our um, last or latest submission um, to the uh, bodies responsible for making the final decision. Because if we're going to be stuck with these things, we might as well at least get some industrial benefit from it and some job security from it, bearing in mind that what's going on at the moment. So my four questions very briefly are, if this lot is approved, how many jobs are estimated will be provided locally, presumably at Lairds, because that would be a benefit to the, to the community, clearly. Um, what will those jobs comprise? Are they purely labouring jobs or are they technically competent jobs that would involve skilled people who need to be employed in that capacity? The third question is, for how long would these jobs be likely to last? In other words, is it going to be a short-term thing, or could it be going on for a number of years? And the fourth and final uh, on one, which is very uh, clear to, to me discussion, is will the will the labour be locally resourced or brought in from outside? So I think if we're going to be stuck with these things at all, which I have commented previously and continued comments, I think there's something in the paper which I think uh, my councillor colleague at the end has uh, commented against. In the globe this week, and I gather he said something nasty about it. I'm not sure it's where, actually. But um, really, I think if we're going to be stuck with these appalling monstrosities, at least we should get some benefit as a borough from the construction and erection processes that are going to go on. And I'd like some uh, confirmation in some way that those will be considered. We've already discussed the tourism aspects and whether these things on the skyline um, are so intrusive that they're going to put off tourists coming here. I don't think that will be the case, but I certainly wouldn't be coming here from a distance to look at them. And I want that also taken into account, maybe in more detail than it has been at the moment, the impact from um, the seascape aspects and from the environmental aspects as well as the visitor attraction aspects. So I hope you've taken those thoughts on board and maybe you can incorporate them into the final response you make regarding all the issues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David.